Wait, wait, wait. Before you let yourself fall down the Kibi rabbit hole, hear me out. Because I found a simpler system that has not 13, not 10, but only three different body types. Let me explain how the system works and walk you through the self-diagnosis test that can help you determine which one of the three body types that you belong to. We'll also go through some examples of celebrities that belong to these different body types and how they compare to their verified Kibi IDs, and you'd be surprised at the results. So if you want to learn more, make sure to stay tuned till the end. So I came across this system when I was doing my research around Kibi in preparation for my self-diagnosis of the Kibi ID video from a few weeks ago. And this system that I came across is called the Skeletal Diagnosis. It originated from Japan and it was developed by an image consultant named Hutagami Yumiko. And it's called Skeletal Diagnosis because the system mainly looks at your bone structure to type you into one of the three body types, which are straight, wave, and natural. But it's not just about your bone structure. The system also takes into account other characteristics of your body, like the overall thickness of your body and the texture of your flesh, the way your muscles and fat sit on your bones, and predominantly where you gain fat first or the most, and the overall balance of your upper and lower body. So it's taking all these unique characteristics of your body and the overall line to determine what kind of silhouette and fabric are the most suitable for your body type. And how the naming of these three types came to be is that straight types are the most suitable for straight lines in the designs or the outfits, wave types are suitable for wavy and flowy lines, and natural types are best suited for relaxed and unconstructed fabrics and silhouettes. Anyway, seeing the description of these three body types, there are some similarities and parallels as well as some differences between the skeletal diagnosis and Kibi. First of all, in terms of similarities, both systems focus on the fact that your type doesn't change with age or weight gain. They're both based on the natural lines of your body and bone structure, which shouldn't change once your body is fully developed. Also, both systems are based on how the fabric drapes over the body, so there is an emphasis around specific shapes and fabrics that are suitable for each body type. But the difference of the skeletal diagnosis from Kibi is that there is no height limit or any sort of an indication based on your height. In my Kibi video, I talked about how I found Kibi to be exceptionally confusing because of the height limit and all the exceptions around it, as well as the whole concept of vertical. And the skeletal diagnosis disregards that concept for the most part. So if you're confused about what Kibi really means by vertical, or if you're just short like me, where based on the general height indication, the image IDs that you can fit into are quite limited, and you're not sure if you're the exception or not, I think you might find the skeletal diagnosis to be helpful in that sense. The system really seems to focus a lot more on the actual size of your bones as well as the texture and the thickness of your skin and flesh. And it also looks at the overall balance between your upper and lower body and which side tends to be heavier. And this whole concept of balance is a little different from Kibi since balance in Kibi terms is all about between yin and yang and not about upper and lower body. And obviously the skeletal diagnosis only has three types, not 10. So it kind of gives you a more general direction and it is quite a bit simpler in my opinion. Okay, so I was initially going to share the self-diagnosis test with you in this video, but I came to the realization that if I translate the quiz word by word, it could be copyright infringement. I'm not sure because this test is technically self-diagnosis, so it should be public information, but I just don't want to risk it. So instead, I'm going to share a link in the description of a Reddit post that reinterpreted the quiz in English. And I say it was reinterpreted because the questions in this post are not the exact same as the original quiz, but it still does cover a lot of the key components that I think can be used as a guideline. So try it for yourself and see what kind of characteristics for each of the body types you resonate with the most. In the next section of the video, I am assuming that you've taken the test, but even if you haven't, I'll still go over the body types one by one. So once you've answered all the questions, tally them up to see which one between A, B, and C you've answered the most. If you have the most A's in your answers, then your body type is straight. 
Straight types have the most voluptuous body out of the three types. Firmness and elasticity in the skin and flesh is very obvious for these types, and they have a relatively short neck with collarbones or kneecaps not being very visible. They have some thickness in the body from the side view, and they have both a high bust top and high hips, so the torso is on the shorter side and hence the voluptuousness in the body even from the side view. As I mentioned earlier, the naming conventions of these body types are based on the overall lines of the silhouettes that your body is best suited for. That means for straight types, outfits that are tailored and have a classic fit are the best lines for your body. And because your body is the most suitable for a very classic silhouette, textures that create clean lines like cotton, denim, wool, and leather with smooth grain are your best fabrics. I think simplicity in the outfits is the key for this body type, so no ruffles, nothing drapey or nothing that has a lot of details in the clothing. And same thing with patterns, they should be clean, not too small or dainty, not too busy, and they need a decent level of contrast. Before we get into the specific celebrity examples, we'll go through the characteristics of each body type first, because I want to leave comparing these celebrity examples to their verified Kibi IDs to the end. Now, if you've answered mostly B in the questions, then you belong to the wave type. This type has a long neck and a long torso and is bottom heavy. Shape-wise, if we were to compare to a fruit-shaped body, it would be a pear shape. They have the smallest or the most delicate bone structure out of the three types, so they have very visible but very delicate collarbones. They have a low bust line and low hips which contribute to the long torso, and their bodies can appear quite flat from the side view. Wave types are best suited for flowy or wavy silhouettes. This type wears the traditional quote-unquote feminine styles of outfits very well. Fabric-wise, lightweight materials like chiffon or thinner knit materials like angora or mohair are good options. So something that hugs the body that can show off the delicate and feminine frame are the best for you. Patterns should have small shapes and low contrast, so overall a very delicate style of fabric and outfit choices. And then the third type is the natural type. And I think this type is actually quite similar to the Kibi Naturals. And if you guys have watched my Kibi video, I typed myself as a flamboyant natural. And a lot of you seem to agree that I am some type of a natural, although some of you also thought that I might be a dramatic classic. Natural types are the most frame dominant type out of the three. Bluntness in the bones is the most obvious with this type, so shoulders are quite prominent and so are the collarbones, but unlike the wave types, the collarbones have a very firm and sturdy feel to them. They usually have straightness in the waist area and they're quite muscle and bone dominant, so their skin has a thick and a leathery feel to it. So for natural types, unconstructed silhouettes work best for them. So oversized and loose and nothing too restricting works well for this type. And I found a lot of information saying that this is the most fashionable body type out of the three. And a lot of models apparently fall into this type. Fabric-wise, they need the most weighted fabric out of the three types, so thicker knit fabrics like wool or corduroy, more textured and heavier leather and tweed are all good choices. And pattern-wise, bold and asymmetrical shapes like big florals, paisley, or camouflage work the best for this body type. But I have my own opinions about patterns in general, and I do think that there is some relation between patterns and color seasons, but that's a whole separate topic that deserves a video of its own, so I'll cover that later. For now, let's just leave these as general guidelines. All right, so these are the three body types, and you could be a mix of these types as well. So if your answers were mostly A and B together, you could have characteristics of both straight and wave types, or A and C together would mean that you're between the straight and natural types, etc. I mostly answered C, but I did have some A's and B's as well. So I could also have elements in my body that are of all types, but my dominant body type is natural. Okay, now that we know what the three body types are, let's go over some celebrity examples to see how their verified Kibi IDs compare to these body types. And because we're using verified Kibi IDs, I'm also going to try to only use verified body types within the skeletal diagnosis system as well. This is just an intro video to the system, so let's just stick to verified for now. Starting with the straight body type, a verified straight type in the skeletal diagnosis system is Madonna, who is a verified romantic in Kibi. I thought this was really interesting because my assumption of what the straight type would be equivalent to in Kibi was like a dramatic classic. 
just based on the silhouettes of the straight lines, structure, symmetry, a geometric v-neck. But then straight body types are also more top heavy and especially around the bust area, we talked about the higher bust line. And this body type is supposed to be the most voluptuous out of the three, which I can kind of see how that could be related to accommodating curve in kibby terms because the fabric would need to accommodate the protrusion of a higher bust line. I don't know, that's just my guess. But the theory or the argument for this body type in the skeletal diagnosis system is that the body already has curves and volume and clear elasticity in the flesh that in order for these characteristics to truly shine, simple and fitted outfits are the best for them. Which I think makes a lot of sense for Madonna. I think she can easily look quite sloppy or overwhelming in clothes that are not very fitted. And details like ruffles in her upper body I don't think are the best. I think opening up the neckline more and keeping it simple were it's better for her. So it seems that there are different methodologies of accommodating your curve in kibby terms or the voluptuousness of the body between the two systems, which I think is quite interesting. And then we've got the wave type, which based on these outfits, my guess was that it would be a parallel to a soft gamine, but apparently Audrey Hepburn would be considered a wave type and she's a flamboyant gamine in kibby. I think there are similarities in the bone structure between the wave body type and gamines because they're both petite. And the wave body type is supposed to be the most delicate and small framed out of the three body types. And they're supposed to have a long torso, which I guess parallels the vertical or elongation that flamboyant gamines are supposed to have. But just based on the outfit suggestions, I thought that low styles are more similar to the softer and more yin side of the gamines, which is why my brain connected this body type to the soft gamine. And maybe there are other verified soft gamines that fall into the wave body type as well, but given that the system has originated from Japan and most examples are Asian, I just couldn't find more parallel examples that are verified in both systems. But just to give you an idea, these are some of the Asian celebrities that have been typed as the wave body types. And then we have the natural body type, which I think this one is a true parallel to the Kibi Naturals. So a verified celebrity in both systems as a natural is Angelina Jolie. Being frame dominant and also having broadness in the shoulders are common characteristics of the naturals in both systems. And in terms of the outfit suggestions as well, we see that the styles are quite similar between the two. One interesting factor about the skeletal diagnosis system is that it's developed in Asia, so their examples are primarily Asian bodies, of course, and apparently, statistics-wise, natural body types are the least common amongst East Asians. And I mentioned before about how I've always kind of felt out of place, especially amongst my family members and my Asian friends, because I've always been considered to have very broad shoulders and just a broad frame in general, more so than the average. And learning about the skeletal diagnosis system that has a lot more Asian examples was really enlightening for me. So for my Asian sisters out there, if you're watching this, if you've just felt lost with Kibi because of the lack of examples that you can use as a point of reference, I think this would be a really good alternative. And like I said, today I'm just introducing the system and I myself am just learning the system as well. So I don't have many non-Asian examples yet, but with future videos, as I dive more into the individual body types, I will try to come up with some non-East Asian examples. I've been getting some feedback that my examples are too white and East Asian based. And I don't mean to offend anyone by that. It's just that celebrities that I know of are either North American who are predominantly white or Asian celebrities that I know of because of my own culture. So I'm not trying to be exclusive on purpose, okay? I just don't know all the celebrities around the world, but I will try to find a way to make this work for everybody as much as possible. Just be patient with me. I hope you found the video helpful and I'll see you in my next video. Until then, stay unique and stay gorgeous.